New to max test is a good way to determine a subject's cardiovascular fitness by looking at how well a body can transport and use oxygen during exercise. One of the byproducts of cardiorespiratory fitness is the production of carbon dioxide. The more carbon dioxide you're expelling, the closer you're reaching that plateau before you go into anaerobic energy production where you're no longer using enough oxygen to produce the energy you need and so the body is not using oxygen to produce that energy and at some point you'll have to stop because you need oxygen to continue getting that energy. The VO2 max number will be expressed in milliliters per kilogram per minute when on a treadmill. It's the way the blood is using oxygen and transferring to the muscles that are using that oxygen. So the higher a VO2 max test can get, the higher the number they can get, the better their body is at transferring and using the oxygen during that exercise test. An average college student around the age between 20 and 30 will have a VO2 max of about 45 for males or about 35 for females. As you get into the more elite populations, as far as athletics are concerned, they'll be reaching more of a 80 VO2 max or even up into the 92s for cross-country skiers and so on and so forth. During a VO2 max test, we're going to have them hooked up to a machine that will look at the gases coming in and out of the system through the mouth. Um, we'll be looking at how much carbon dioxide is being expelled from the body and how much oxygen is being used by the body. And by looking at the comparison between those two, we can figure out how much oxygen is being used and transported, and that's where the VO2 max number will come from. We'll start them off at a fairly slow walking pace, at no slope or grade increase, and then over time, every three minutes, we'll increase grade or speed or both, and then eventually they'll reach a plateau where they cannot go any further. Heart rate has reached a max, they're exhausted, and they need to stop, and by that point, hopefully, they've reached a VO2 max number. We'll look at their heart rate to make sure they've reached a true heart rate max, and a lot of times we'll base that on a predicted heart rate, which is usually 220 minus their age. Um, we'll also look at how they're feeling throughout the test. We'll be asking them on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being extremely tired, can't go any further, one being not tired at all. We'll ask them on a scale of how they feel of rate of perceived exertion. A lot of times in research we'll do a pretest, have them do some type of exercise intervention for a couple weeks and then have them come back for a post-test VO2 max and to see how well they improved in their exercise capacity or if they didn't improve by being sedentary for those eight weeks or however long you had that intervention for. We can look at how well things changed over that time frame. People with a higher VO2 max, it doesn't always correlate well with performance just because there's so many other issues that go into a performance, whether it's the mental aspect of the performance or how well they're able to maintain that VO2 max, how long they can hold that VO2 max, all go into a person's performance. So it's a good measure to look at the cardiorespiratory fitness, but not as a measure of performance. Mm -hmm.